respect for coming. Thank you First for and having foremost, me. I want to just give a shout out to my heroes and friends for doing this with me. And we couldn't resist the temptation to do a Janet Jackson um, Rhythm Nation <laughs> microphone kind of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here to talk about work. In, in my past, work has meant many things from packing bags in more than one type of way um, to playing basketball, to cooking food, washing dishes, etc. So I want to get an understanding from you, Lynette, like being first generation here in London, what, what was it like with your family when you went to art school and if they ever considered that work? to this day, or, or what did it take for them to <laughs> have that understanding, like, oh, this is work, or this is working? Um, I'm still waiting, actually, to some extent. No, that's not true. They, I mean, I think coming here in the 60s, as my parents did, moving here from Ghana, um, there was always this strong sense within my family unit that work was survival. So, you did what you needed to do. Um, and my parents trained as nurses um, in, in Ghana and were part of that wave of people sort of pretty much invited here to do the jobs that nobody wanted to do here. So as, as nurses, um, they, let, they, they worked a, a kind of crazy schedule to make ends meet with the family. So. I don't think there was ever a point where I really said, I'm going to be an artist, because they would have been quite horrified and terrified by the concept. But as I moved through education, and it became sort of like a, a likelihood that I would continue with this, I had to handle it quite softly. I couldn't, there was never a point where I could say, this is going to be my work, because I think the anxiety that would have caused them <laughs> would have maybe been too much. So. Um, but I always had a strong sense that, I mean, I, I never, I, I can't say I ever planned to do this. I can't say it's a career that you can plan. It's a career you sort of, you, you survive through, you make a way through, you find a way through. There's no one way of doing it. And so for me, work was always survival and the, and the compulsion to do, the compulsion to get through to the next step. There was never any planning involved apart from the next step. How about you, Sir David? It's no sirs. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, work is, I mean, I think Lynette's um, sort of description of the relationship to, you know, first-generation um, families is, is probably quite universal in the sense that, you know, uh, for all our parents, it was about, you know, that education was emancipation and freedom, you know, it was the kind of a way to get to a life where you were in control. Um, and for me, the concept of work was to finally have control. Um, not control as in wanting to kind of set things up, but control in the sense of being able to be who I wanted to be in the world. So um, for me, when I discovered architecture, architecture was a kind of way for me to creatively express myself. And um, you know, up to that point, I thought I wanted to be a doctor, a scientist, you know, I was like chasing, my brothers were doing other things. And um, I thought that maybe that was what it was about. But you know, um, when I discovered that Creativity was kind of ultimately what kind of fueled my passion for life. It was impossible to go back, and it was it transcended from being this notion of work that was a translation of my parents' generation to being a kind of an idea of, well, this is what living is about. You know, because for me, the, the the biggest fear was to was to not find why I was living. <laughs> I think that was my biggest fear. You know. Okay. And was there any particular project or moment? where what you chose as your path resonated with your parental unit? Where they're like, oh, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, mean, I think the closest I could get was a really bizarre moment when I was at, when I was studying, when I was at the RA. And this didn't by any means set their minds at rest, but I was selected for, um, a, 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 it's gonna sound really strange, but basically I was asked to meet the queen Mm. which for me wasn't really, I mean, I, I wasn't really that concerned about that, but like there was money involved, like quite a substantial amount of money. It was an <laughs> award. It was like it's been given an award. And, and I don't know, I think it, it was almost like, ah, oh, the queen. 
This is serious. <laughs> this stuff is, you know, maybe this, maybe this, this thing has legs. You know, maybe this is... Because um, they were less, weirdly, they were less concerned about them. I was like, money. <laughs> I was broke. Yeah. Um, but that was, I think, a moment where they were like, ah, oh, you know, as much as... Because I think part of that sense was always that as or w one thing I was always taught was that we, we would have to be um, in some ways three times as good to get half as far. So um, with that in mind, there was a, always a feeling that the choice of work, that's why, as David was saying, you know, with, you know, doctor, lawyer, pick something solid, pick something that you can't kind of, you can't go wrong with. You can always get work, you can always do something. Um, and so this, the, the, this sense of feeling um, safe or feeling like we'd chosen something safe was the important thing. And I don't think the fear or the concern or the, like, the concern for us ever really goes away. It's yeah. just like, okay, make sure you can survive. If this doesn't work out, make sure you've got a plan B and make sure there's, you know, another way. So yeah, the queen, I guess. <laughs> It's funny because mom was like, when we did it, we did a project with Martha Stewart, and my mom was like, okay, I guess this is now just a game, you know? And yes, a kind of similar thing, you know, prominent, you know, woman, but, you <laughs> queen, know, Martha Stewart. And, and it's wild because it's like, you know, all of these things travel in the world, like, it's, it's always interesting to see the thing that resonates with them when they're like, oh, okay, you're not like just playing around, it's not a phase, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And um, I want to use that to segue in talking about the current state of affairs as far as media and sharing of work. And although you both do beautiful projects and make beautiful things, you don't use your social media platforms to share your personal work. <laughs> so I want to kind of understand the um, thoughts behind that. Well, it, that's kind of interesting because actually I, I think I do, but I don't share what people think that I should share, um, which is the production of The Office, necessarily. Um, but I share like the most intimate thing for me, which is my personal observations um, that I'm engaged with. And they are, they are very real, and it's done by me. Um, there's no sort of comms person doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and, I, um, and I think that that was probably the most generous way I could be with what my personal kind of reflections are, because in a way, my, my my biggest thing is constantly looking for inspiration and looking for things that stimulate you. And I could show what I'm doing as production, but that sort of just, in a way, will always, it will eventually come out. The kind of most intimate thing I, that won't come out, well, maybe comes out when you're dead if anybody cares, is the things that inspired you. Um, and so, um, you know, the idea that somehow social media allows this kind of one-on-one -on -one engagement with the entire planet that has access to the technology um, seem very beautiful um, as a way to just say, you know, I was here and this this was a really powerful image for me, or this was a really powerful uh, kind of moment. I don't share myself as a, per you know, I don't have like, it's not my personal memories, those are for me and my family and my friends, but like I share those intimate thoughts. And I think that that's what social media is really, for me, very powerful for, for creative people anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I've, I struggle with the idea of putting my. Th I mean, I don't. I don't do many things. I do Instagram. I don't really do anything else. Um, and I. I think because it's not because it's fairly new to me. Like I've when when I started making work or started thinking about what I'm doing now. Um, None of these things were there. None of these things really existed, as they didn't for, like, as they didn't for David or a lot of other people. And so, I, I still haven't really felt like it was appropriate for me because of the, the fact of I, I know there's this kind of physicality to the work I do or the, the, the way I work that doesn't really, for me, come through um, on a on a screen this big in a square. That's not to say that it it, it can't and you know in other I, I have no problem with other people posting stuff, but it's just like I don't. Uh, I I guess there's a little bit of 
superstition there as well <laughs> about <laughs> it's like you know the I think superstition is, is, is yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of like superstition in that yeah. thing. I, und I totally understand like, that. Bad juju. <laughs> bad juju. <laughs> you don't leave your you know you don't leave your bits lying around. <laughs> I guess it's it's something of intimacy as well. I don't to me it's like flashing at everyone every yeah. day. Look what I'm doing. Yeah. I, you know I ca I haven't really I I've never I've never felt that. It's such Compulsion. a West African thing, I think. <laughs> I, I think. I think it's that, and I think it's yeah. also generational, because it's yeah. like, if I don't post for like three weeks, people are like, are you okay? <laughs> um, are you alive? Is, is ghetto gastro still a thing? Um, so it's interesting, like, being able, but I always joke with you and say, like, you, you move like a drug dealer on the internet. <laughs> you don't know when or where or how. It's like... You know, Russia, <laughs> Mexico, in a 36-hour period, you're like, you know, what's really going on? And I also want to talk about identity and how does identity play a role in your work, if it does, or whether they also a, a process of having to unlearn certain Western constructs to discover your aesthetic or create the aesthetic that you you kind of in your work. I think, I, think that, I think all of us, I think as creative people are always struggling with identity and who we are and what we're making. Um, I don't, you know, I, I just think that sometimes as people of color that becomes like the only thing that becomes discussed and it's irritating. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course that's there, but it's, you know, it somehow becomes this kind of foreground. Um, but, but at the same time, I don't want to dismiss it because it's very, very important. Um, it is part of the kind of emergence um, of, the, of the moment. But, but creatively, as a person, you, you know, you, the creative act is about a kind of reflection <laughs> of yourself and your position in the world and your relationship to things. So I think it's continually about that. It can, it, you can't even get away with it. Even as something you know, like architecture or I think uh, even other things, I think everything you do kind of is through that lens of that experience. And for me, architecture, you know, I, I chose to practice a certain kind of architecture as I sort of matured in my ability to make things that for me would um, deal with a particular kind of engagement um, in the world that, and that engagement was about kind of the anger that allowed me to find my creativity. I call it anger now or the kind of infuriation at the situation um, and in the sense of, you know, what would you do? Well, well, okay, then spend your life dealing with that and if you, you know, can spend your life dealing with that and it gets a bit better, then great. If it doesn't, then you've tried um, but you can't complain about it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's so woven into the fabric, as David's saying, of everything you do and everything you make, who you are, what you what you've seen, what interests you, and I think as much as it's woven in, thinking very kind of literally about the act of working, the act of making, the act of getting up getting yourself together, getting to a studio or to an office, having to think about what you're about to do, what, what you're putting out into the world, how, you're, um, how your ideas are evolving. You know, you're not, it's not like you're, there's no active, there's never an active moment of trying to get away from who you are and that you can't. And, and it's, it's being able to do that on your own terms and being able to speak about who you are, what you are, but also what you're doing and all the things that come into that, all the thoughts that come in, every inspiration, every, every aspect of that to come through, that there should never be a sense of feeling like you're, there's, there's, there's only one, one point being made or one idea being explored. And I think that's, that's for me how I've, I've, always, I've always really thought in terms of a work ethic. Um, one of my heroes of my entire life will always be Prince. I, I, something that stuck with me for my whole life was the idea that Prince got up and made music every day, and he made something every day, and that stuck with me from when I was a kid, just that maybe that's why I work the way that I do. I, I, I go to a studio, I'm, if I don't do something <laughs> that day, um, good or bad, I feel really angry with myself. If I do a painting and it's crap and I have to destroy it, I'm angry when I go home. But somehow that anger makes me go in the next day and try again. Um, I remember Chris, actually, Chris Ophelia saying something to me about like the fact of like 
feeling like you were actually at war with something and not going home until you'd, you'd kind of fixed it. And he's like, so you just sit there and just stare at me. <laughs> and like, it's like your face off with the thing until it's, until it's right. And I, I think, I suspect it's the same for you, it's the same for you, this kind of, you, you know, you, you, you want to win. And that's a personal winning. It's nothing to do with what the world's going to see. It's feeling like you've actually done something. You've worked. <laughs> yeah, I find, I find that most of the work I do is, comes from a, I don't like to use the word selfishness, but everything I create or work on is really for me and for others like me. And it's like if other people mess with it, all right, cool. That's like a residual bonus. But I really just want to put things into the world that resonate with me. So I think on that, we can end in a very black, happy birthday to David I.J. way. Cue the joint. <laughs> you.